In January 2023, BAE System Sweden announced that it had secured a contract worth $30 million from the Swedish Defense Material Administration. The contract involved the production of 20 Mjolnir self-propelled mortar systems for the Swedish Army. These systems were intended to compensate for the decrease in long-range firepower after the Swedish Army provided assistance to Ukraine by supplying Archer artillery systems. Currently, the Swedish Army only has 48 Archer artillery systems, and the loss of long-range strike capability was significant after sending 12 of them to Ukraine. BAE System Sweden stated that the delivery of the 20 Mjolnir self-propelled mortar systems would be completed before 2025, bringing the total number of these systems ordered by the Swedish Army to 80. Now, why did Sweden choose to acquire additional self-propelled mortar systems to compensate for the decrease in long-range firepower after supplying howitzers? The self-propelled mortar system in question is nicknamed Mjolnir, which translates to Thor's hammer in English. Does its firepower live up to its name? When it comes to Sweden, it should not be underestimated just because it is a permanently neutral country. Sweden has one of the largest armed forces in the Nordic region, particularly the Swedish Army. Its main force consists of 110 STRV-122A main battle tanks based on the German Leopard 2A5, and it is also equipped with 354 CV-90 infantry fighting vehicles of various types. In terms of long-range firepower, the Swedish Army currently has 48 Archer artillery systems and 40 Amos twin-barrel self-propelled mortars. On January 18, 2023, Sweden announced that it would provide Ukraine with a batch of weapons worth a total of $419 million, including 50 CV-90 infantry fighting vehicles, 12 Archer artillery systems, NLAW anti-tank missiles, mine-clearing equipment, and light weapons. This meant that the Swedish army suddenly lost a quarter of its long-range firepower. So why didn't Sweden choose to replenish the Archer artillery systems? It was deemed too expensive. Let's take a look at the Archer system. It is considered one of the most advanced wheeled self-propelled artillery systems in the world and is often referred to as the Cannon King of the North. However, such formidable performance comes at a high cost. The unit price of an Archer self-propelled howitzer is as high as $4.5 million. When considering the accompanying ammunition and support vehicles, the total system price easily exceeds $5 million. This has led buyers like Norway and India to abandon their orders. Currently, Sweden is the only user of the Archer system, and the reduction in orders has further worsened the production capacity. Even if Sweden were willing to pay a high price for additional units, the production capacity would not be able to fill the gap in long-range firepower in the coming years. But in an era where 155mm artillery shells and 1,000kg bombs are commonplace, can mortar firepower be compared to howitzers? This brings us to the different roles of the two. Although mortars have a shorter range compared to howitzers, they excel in terms of rate of fire and trajectory flexibility. Mortars use spin-stabilized projectiles with a spindle-shaped tail fin. The low initial velocity of such projectiles results in increased drag after the propellant energy is spent, causing the impact angle to be close to vertical. This is especially true when firing at high angles, where the impact angle is almost perpendicular. As a result, mortars have a significant trajectory curvature. Furthermore, mortars have lower chamber pressures compared to howitzers. With the same caliber, mortar rounds can carry more propellant and deliver greater power. Due to the trajectory curvature and spindle shape, the explosion fragments from mortar rounds are distributed more evenly, resulting in a circular kill zone. On the other hand, howitzer rounds have a flatter trajectory, and the shells explode at a certain angle upon impact, creating a rectangular kill zone. Some fragments may bury themselves in the ground, causing ineffective kills. Therefore, mortars still play a crucial role on the battlefield, especially in countries like Sweden with diverse mountainous and hilly terrains, 
serving as heavy firepower support for ground forces. So why didn't Sweden choose the existing Amos system? Was it also due to price issues? The Amos self-propelled mortar is the world's first turret-mounted twin-barrel self-propelled mortar officially deployed. When it was introduced, it amazed the world because, before that, most countries used the simplest approach for self-propelled mortars, which involved mounting infantry mortars directly on the chassis of armored transport vehicles. This approach was convenient and cost-effective, but the convenience came at the expense of improved survivability and firepower accuracy. The Amos system, on the other hand, stood out from those cheaper alternatives in terms of appearance, and its greatest feature was its high firing rate and precision. Thanks to its automatic loading system, which uses a breech loading mechanism, the Amos achieved full automation and eliminated the need for loaders to repeatedly handle and raise heavy mortar rounds. Additionally, the dual-barrel side-by-side -side configuration doubled the firing rate. It could fire 16 rounds of ammunition within 15 seconds, averaging less than one second per round. In addition to its impressive firing capabilities, the Amos was equipped with an advanced fire control system comprising a computer, navigation, positioning, and attitude determination systems. It could automatically calculate firing angles based on different types of ammunition, ensuring that all 16 rounds hit the same target. The turret design allowed for 360-degree firing, enhancing both its protective capabilities and firing flexibility. However, such outstanding performance comes at a high cost. The Amos self-propelled mortar is even more expensive than the Archer self-propelled howitzer. The unit price of the Amos is $6.8 million, compared to the Archer's $4.5 million. While the Amos offers advanced capabilities, its cost is a significant factor to consider. On the other hand, Mjolnir, or Thor's hammer, is different. It can be seen as a simplified version of the Amos and was introduced by Sweden in 2019 as a more affordable alternative. Its structure is more reliable and cost-effective. According to a contract signed in 2016 between the Swedish Defense Material Administration and BAE Systems, the Swedish Army purchased 40 Mjolnir systems for a total price of 575 million Swedish krona, or approximately $68 million. This translates to an average unit price of $1.7 million, which is only one-fifth of the Amos's price. The Mjolnir retains the dual-barrel 120mm mortar design of the Amos. However, many people are surprised when they first see the Mjolnir because it appears to have four barrels. From an external perspective, the modular does indeed look like it has four barrels, but the two tubes located on the upper part are not actually barrels, they are ammunition loading devices. This is one of the simplifications made in the Mjolnir compared to the Amos. Unlike the Amos, which uses a breech loading mechanism, the Mjolnir is equipped with two front loading 120mm mortars. During the loading process, the loading devices sink, allowing the loader inside the vehicle to place the mortar rounds into the loading devices. Then the loading devices rise again. At a certain height, the rounds are pushed into the two lower barrels, and the mortar rounds slide into the bottom of the barrels, where they are fired upon impact with the firing pin. Traditionally, self-propelled mortars that use front-loading mechanisms would have an open turret design to accommodate manual loading operations. However, such self-propelled mortars have poor sealing and lack defense capabilities. In order to perform front-loading operations in a closed turret, BAE Systems designed the Mjolnir to have the appearance of a four-barreled self-propelled mortar, while in reality, it is a product with only two barrels. This unique design is a compromise between sealing and loading methods. Amos, on the other hand, uses a breech-loading cannon. The structure of the mortar is the same as that of conventional barrel artillery. The ammunition is loaded from the rear of the cannon, allowing it to be equipped with an automatic loading system. This improves the firing rate. However, the downside is that it is heavy and has a complex structure, which also contributes to its overall high cost. In contrast, Mjolnir, or Thor's hammer, has a design that utilizes muzzle front loading. As a result, 
only a small portion of the barrel is exposed externally, giving it a less imposing appearance compared to Amos. However, this design is more in line with the concept of Thor's hammer. The advantage of this loading method is that it has a relatively simple structure and higher component reliability. It also results in a lighter overall weight. However, it is worth noting that 120mm mortar rounds themselves are not lightweight, typically weighing between 15 and 20 kilograms. The loading mechanism of Mjolnir is primarily designed to eliminate the need for manual loading, but other actions still require human effort. If the physical exertion of the manual loaders becomes too great, it naturally affects the operational efficiency. Therefore, compared to Amos, which is equipped with an automatic loading system, Mjolnir has a lower firing rate. Amos can fire 16 rounds within 15 seconds, while Mjolnir has a maximum firing rate of 16 rounds within 60 seconds, with a sustained rate reduced to 10 rounds per minute. The advantage of this modification, if we were to mention one, is that it saves money. Another aspect of the simplified design of Mjolnir is its turret. Although both Amos and Mjolnir use independent turrets, Mjolnir's turret cannot rotate horizontally through 360 degrees. Its firing arc is only 60 degrees to the left and right, with an elevation angle ranging from 45 to 85 degrees. This design reduces its flexibility in combat but simplifies production and lowers manufacturing costs. Additionally, since Amos's turret requires full rotation like a tank, it is equipped with a personnel basket compartment underneath the turret. However, this structure is not needed from Jalner, resulting in a larger internal space within the vehicle. The 56 rounds of 120mm mortar ammunition carried by Mjolnir are stored in the rear compartment of the turret, providing spacious room for the personnel inside the turret and ensuring safer ammunition storage. This enhances the overall survivability of the vehicle, with the ability to carry a maximum of 104 rounds in extreme conditions, stored in various locations such as the vehicle hull and rear ammunition racks. When ammunition replenishment is required, the rear hatch of the turret can be opened for operations. The Mjolnir's turret is also equipped with a fire control system, but for cost reduction purposes, its fire control system does not support mobile firing capability or the ability to hit the same target with multiple rounds simultaneously. Additionally, the navigation system is replaced with Sweden's own cost-effective version of the POS2 navigation system. As for other aspects, there isn't much difference. Both can use Sweden's CV-90 infantry fighting vehicle as the chassis. However, Amos has two chassis options, tracked and wheeled, to meet different requirements. The Finnish army chose their domestic Patria wheeled armored vehicle as the chassis, while Sweden selected the CV-90 tracked infantry fighting vehicle. The tracked version has a slightly slower maximum speed but better cross-country mobility, making it more advantageous in muddy terrain. The wheeled chassis has a higher maximum speed on roads, providing enhanced tactical mobility. However, due to the weaker load-bearing capacity of the wheeled chassis, additional turret suspension devices are required. Following the principle of saving money, Jalner currently only has the CV-90 tracked infantry fighting vehicle as its chassis option. In terms of protection, in addition to the basic armor, it can be equipped with additional ceramic armor, which can withstand attacks from 14.5mm armor-piercing rounds. As for the ammunition fired, both Mjolnir and Amos can fire various types of 120mm mortar rounds, including anti-armor high-explosive rounds and STRX infrared terminal-guided mortar rounds. Therefore, in terms of the most crucial artillery firepower, both systems are comparable. However, they do have their drawbacks, one of is the relatively slow flight speed of mortar rounds, making them susceptible to detection by enemy counter-artillery radars. However, overall, once Mjolnir locks onto a target, it can unleash a devastating volley of shells, further enhancing its long-range indirect fire capabilities and anti-armor firepower when integrated into the Swedish army.